is a major war going on right now. It is the war of the handheld gaming devices. And it is ruthless. In front of you are the top four warriors in this battle. Each one has a particular set of skills that makes them stand out. But only one of them has the edge to remain standing while shots are still being fired around them. The first warrior in the fight is the Nintendo Switch. It is currently the reigning king because it's been around the longest. It has a massive library as well as an incredibly loyal community. But now cracks in its armor are starting to appear. It's showing its age. The new warriors in this battle are equipped with better technology, making the Nintendo Switch look like a tired old man. Seeing an opportunity, Valve jumped into the battle with the Steam Deck. It's far more powerful than the Nintendo Switch because it's an actual PC running Linux with SteamOS laid on top of it. Gamers who had a huge collection of titles that they purchased from the Steam store over the years gravitated toward this. They can now play AAA titles on the go without the need of a PC. The Steam Deck was well received, but because it is Linux based, it had its limitations, mainly that it could not play every game. And that's where this soldier jumps into the fight, the Asus ROG Ally. This device has more power under the hood than the Steam Deck. It runs Windows, and because it runs Windows, it can play every game you throw at it. That means even the games that do not play on a Steam Deck. But its greatest asset is also its greatest weakness, and that is Windows. Most people do not want to do all the tinkering it involves to get a game to run properly on Windows. They just want to sit down, press play, and start playing. So the ROG Ally seems to be catered towards hardcore PC gamers who know exactly what they need to do to get the game running the way they want. The newest warrior in this battle is a Maverick, a wild card. It's not a handheld console like the Switch. It's not even a gaming PC. As a matter of fact, you can't even download a game on this thing. This is the PlayStation Portal, a $200 accessory that requires the PlayStation 5 in order to make it work. Technically, this device shouldn't even be in this battle, but it is. And the main reason for that is that it allows you to play your PlayStation library in the palm of your hands. Here we are at the end of 2023, and with all the information out there about gaming handhelds, I'm going to give the win to the Steam Deck. But not the first version. I'm going to declare the updated Steam Deck OLED as the current leader in the handheld gaming device war. On the surface, the LCD model and the OLED model look exactly the same, but Upon closer inspection, you will see a couple differences. The buttons on the OLED now have a gray font and feel a lot more sturdier. The bigger thumbsticks will give you a better grip. The power button is now a bright orange. And you can see from this angle that the bezels on the OLED model are a little bit thinner, which will give you a slightly bigger screen. And now that you know that I've declared Valve as the winner in this gaming handheld battle, I'm going to give you my three reasons that brought me to this conclusion. One of the prime features of a handheld gaming device is that it's supposed to feel extremely comfortable in your hands during those very long gaming sessions. The Nintendo Switch is probably one of the most uncomfortable devices to hold in your hands and play a game for a very long time. It is a carpal tunnel magnet. And if you do not add some type of third party accessory to make it ergonomically correct, you're going to be in a lot of pain. Hopefully Nintendo fixes this with their next version of the Switch. The ROG Ally, while much better than the Switch, still leaves a lot to be desired. The hand grip should have been much thicker so it could cup right into your palm. There are grips that you can purchase to make this much more comfortable, but come on. The PlayStation Portal has a really good grip.
It feels right in your hand. It's the perfect thickness. But hey, come on, look at the source material that it came from. It's extremely comfortable for long gaming sessions, but I'm going to have to deduct points because without the internet, it's useless. The Steam Deck just gets it right. You can sit comfortably in your living room holding the device and playing for multiple hours, and it feels very close to what you would get when you're just playing with your regular game console's controller. I played my Steam Deck on long flights as well as car trips, and never once did I feel that my hands were cramping up. I'm sure that the results may vary depending on hand size, but for me, the Steam Deck gets to win. I really enjoy going into my PC game settings and tinkering with everything, the graphics, the sound. I want it to run perfectly, exactly the way I like to play. But the average person, no, they don't want to do any of that. Valve was fully aware of this, and for their Steam Deck, they gave players the plug-and-play console experience that they were used to with the Nintendo Switch, but this time, running on a PC. The Steam Store also makes the user experience very simple by letting you know up front what games have been verified to play perfectly on the Steam Deck. So when you buy and download it, you know instantly it's going to work. And if you do choose to go into the game settings and adjust things, sure, the option is there. You're getting a very similar experience to that of playing on an Xbox or a PlayStation, but now you're in the PC world. SteamOS is the main reason why everything is running as smooth and simple as it is. And you won't have to run into the constant issues that plague devices that run Windows. That alone gives the Steam Deck the edge in this crowded handheld PC gaming market. I have a lot of friends who are hardcore, dedicated console players, and they don't want anything to do with a PC. But when they played around with the Steam Deck, their reaction was, oh! Okay, this is actually easier than I thought it was going to be. That's a win right there. When the Steam Deck first launched in February 2022, the internet lit up with complaints about the device's functionality. And do you know how Valve responded to all of these complaints? They fixed the issues. Whereas a company like Nintendo would just tell you it's all your fault, Valve listened to its customers' issues and made it easy for them to reach out to the company. Within its first six months of release, software updates were made available to players to correct the issues in a swift manner. And this is an ongoing process. Valve is always working to make the Steam Deck experience better. The release of the Steam Deck OLED demonstrates this in every way. Yes, the OLED screen is absolutely beautiful, and the battery life is a lot stronger. But there are also so many other things that Valve crammed under the hood to make this the definitive version of the Steam Deck. They even increased the size of the power cable so you can have more elbow room when you plug it in. And they also changed the type of screws used to open up the shell of the device, making it easier just in case you want to open it up to modify or repair it. When they say little things mean a lot, it's so true.
There are other things I can go into, but these three highlights are the main reason that I believe the Steam Deck OLED is currently the best handheld gaming system on the market. Don't get me wrong, the original LCD version of the Steam Deck is still great, but if you do have the chance to upgrade, I highly recommend that you do so. I can't wait to see what the Steam Deck 2 will have to offer, but until then, the Steam Deck OLED is my weapon of choice. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays to you all, and please don't forget to like and subscribe.